Hello, I think that I'm live now, um, but I'm just going to wait a few minutes for some people to join. Um, what we're going to be doing today is demoing the Instant Pot, which is a great way to cook basically anything. Like, I think you can make cheesecakes in it, you can do literally anything. Um, we're going to be making the lentil, Tex-Mex lentils from Nisha Vore's cookbook, Vegan Instant Pot. This demo has been canceled a couple of times and we apologize for that. Um, the first time there was a snowstorm, the second time this whole coronavirus thing happened. So we've decided to stop waiting and just do it online. There are disadvantages. You guys can't sample anything when I'm done making it, but when this is all over, we'll try to do another one at the office and you can all come try it. Also, we were gonna do a double thing with Denise making oatmeal and me making Tex-Mex lentils. So if this is popular, we can always do the oatmeal next week or something. Um, so my name is Sarah Fay, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator at the Toronto Vegetarian Association. We're trying to keep you guys engaged during this time where we're all stuck in our homes. Um, today we're doing this by hosting a cooking demo. Uh, we're doing a virtual online spring marketplace next week. We had to cancel our veg spring market because of the coronavirus. So we have rescheduled it to an online uh, marketplace. We're still gonna have panels. We're still gonna have vendors. It's happening next weekend. So make sure you come back we're going to be hosting it on Facebook. It'll be here. And um, yeah, come back next weekend, starting Friday, and watch that. So, Tex Mix Lentils, Instant Pot. This is the Instant Pot. It makes things by pressure cooking. And a lot of people are probably afraid of pressure cookers because they have a bad reputation. Uh, before the Instant Pot, they were these pots with, I guess, hinges or something that you put on the stove. And they had a tendency to blow up and burn people. And every time I talk to my mom about the Instant Pot, she says, don't burn yourself because that's that's the association people have with pressure cookers. Uh, but the Instant Pot is a lot more safe than those old pressure cookers. It has a lock on its lid. It will not open if there's pressure. Um, you have to release the pressure like manually before you can actually open the pot. I can't open it right now because the lentils are done and ready to show you. So what I did, because how an Instant Pot works is you put all the ingredients in, it builds up to pressure, and then it cooks. Uh, I knew that you didn't want to sit here for 40 minutes and listen to me talk while it was cooking. So past me filmed making the lentils. So I'm going to show you the video of past me making the lentils. And then we'll come back and see what they look like. So again, the recipe is from Misha Vore's cookbook, Vegan Instant Pot. Um, it's called Tex-Mex Brown Rice and Lentils. She has a very similar recipe on her website that's available for free if you don't have the cookbook yet. We have tons of copies at the TVA. Um, when we open up again, you can come buy it. But on her website, she has a recipe um, for Mexican rice and beans that has almost the same ingredients except it uses pinto beans instead of lentils. So take a look at that. I'm going to play the video now of me making the recipe and then I'll come back and show you what it tastes like. So, here you go. All right, so this is me an hour ago recording how all of these ingredients got into the Instant Pot. So this is the Instant Pot. I'm gonna take the lid off and inside there's another pot. And this pot is what you do your cooking in. So it goes in here and all of the ingredients go in there. I'm just gonna put the lid here for now. Um, the great thing about this recipe is that you don't need to do anything. You don't need to saute any of the vegetables. I mean, you could if you wanted to, to give them flavor, but the recipe doesn't call for it. So basically you just dump everything into the pot and it's ready to go. It comes together so quickly on a weeknight and it lasts you all week. So I have all the ingredients here. We've got, it calls for four cups of broth. Um, one of these is 900 milliliters, which is just over four cups of broth, under, just under four cups of broth. But I'm gonna use that. Math is not my strong suit. 
so it goes into the pot. <clears throat> And it calls for a four, four ounce, no, a 14 ounce can of tomatoes. And this is a 28 ounce can of tomatoes. So that's how I make up the extra liquid from not having enough broth in one of those containers. <clears throat> uh, peppers, that is an orange pepper. Onions, that is a whole onion, just a white one. Um, it calls for a cup and a half of rice and a cup and a half of lentils. So I've just got green lentils here. I use brown or green usually. Cup and a half. Same with the rice, a cup and a half. Because all of the liquid from the broth and the tomatoes will cook the rice and the lentils, everything just will come out sort of perfect at the end. Rice and lentils. Um, the recipe does not call for broccoli, but I add broccoli to pretty much everything because who doesn't love broccoli? So just throw that in. And it calls for a spice mix of chili powder, cumin, oregano, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, cayenne powder, salt, and pepper. Um, I always overdo my spices, so I don't measure them. I just sort of dump them in because something cannot have too much spice. This is the cumin. Ooh, that was a little too much cumin. We've got paprika. This is not a spicy paprika. This is a sweet paprika. We've got garlic powder. We've got cayenne. I'm not a fan of too much spice, but a little spice is nice. We've got salt. And we've got pepper. And we don't have chili powder because I forgot to grab it. But it is right here. <clears throat> And then we have to add the garlic, six cloves of garlic. You can use um, from the jar if you like, but I do not like jarred garlic, so I always use fresh stuff. Again, garlic is something that I feel that you can't have too much of, but I know opinions on that vary. <clears throat> all the garlic in there and I believe that's everything just let me read my recipe here oh it calls for cilantro but let's be honest I don't like cilantro so I'm not putting it in and lastly I add some spinach because like broccoli really what isn't better with spinach And the great thing about this recipe is there is no oil in it. It is just stuff. So it's not that bad for you if you don't add the sour cream and the cheese or too much cheese and sour cream at the end. Give it all a stir. And then we just put the lid on. So I've got this lid here. When you put it on, it locks and it makes a little song. Uh, this is being cooked for 12 minutes on high pressure. So this is an Instant Pot Ultra. Um, there is an ultra setting that is basically the manual one. And what you want to set is the time and the pressure, which are already set here for 12 minutes on high. And all I do is hit start. And it's going to build up to pressure. And then it's going to cook for 12 minutes. So that takes about 
35 to 40 minutes, which is why I'm recording this in the past so that you don't have to wait and watch it, watch a 40 minute long video of me trying to fill space for 40 minutes now. So yes, this was me in the past and now I'm going to come back to me in the future and we'll finish this up. I can't believe that worked fine. Awesome. So that was me about an hour ago. Um, what happened since then is it built up to pressure, it cooked, and then it was finished. So the Instant Pot has two settings, or they're not settings, but options when you're finished. You can allow the pressure to naturally dissipate, um, which is good for things that need longer cook times. It's longer, it's it's basically, it's it's super duper hot in there, so it's cooking for longer or you can do what's called a quick release. And if you're doing a quick release, you are safely releasing the, the pressure in the pot so that you can get to it faster. So that is what I'm going to do now. Um, it has a button at the top to release the pressure, which I'm going to press. And if I did this when it was just finished, it would steam a lot because it's been sitting for a little while. I don't know how much it's gonna steam. Let's take a look. So yeah, it spits up some hot steam and uh, you could do this for a couple of minutes if you're doing this from a, a pot that just finished cooking. But this one has not a lot of pressure left in it. So it just makes this hissing noise as it releases the pressure and you start to smell all of the good things that are in your pot. Uh, it's too bad Facebook Live doesn't have smell vision because it smells really good in here right now. So as the pressure, pressure releases, you can start to feel that the handle is unlocking because it's no longer dangerous to take the lid off. But it's still good to wait until it completely finishes steaming, which it's still hissing a little bit at me. Um, as it's finished hissing, I can release the button and I can take the lid off. And it's just a nice, delicious looking casserole here. Um, the last thing to do is to add cheese and then just put it back in for a minute. So I'm gonna add some cheese and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Stir up the cheese because everything is better with cheese. I'm using Daya because it's available at my market downstairs and I can't go anywhere else, but it's good stuff. So we'll just let it sit for a minute and then we will take it out of the pot and have a look at it. I want to talk to you about things that can go wrong when you're instant pot cooking. Um, the most common thing that happens is it burns. And what happens when it burns is you don't have enough liquid in the pot and the pot is burning at the bottom. And when that happens, the machine can't build the pressure up and it won't go up to pressure. So it'll make a beep and a little burn sign will come up here and you will learn to hate that burn sign because it means that your your dish isn't cooking right so be get one of these uh spatulas that are wooden or silicon or something that's not metal and all you would do in that oh it's built up to pressure again all you would do in that case is take your wooden spatula and scrape all of the burnt parts off the bottom the burnt parts are good, they have flavor, they just can't be sitting at the bottom. And if you take your pot off while it is, um, while it was building up to pressure, you've probably lost some of the liquids. So if I have to take the pot lid off because it's burning, I will often also add some more liquid in. Um, another common thing that could happen when you're cooking is when it's building up to pressure, it will start hissing through, um, this is the valve here that, le that um, the heat escapes through when it's finished. The first few times I cooked stuff, I thought that meant that I hadn't sealed it correctly, but I did seal it correctly. It just, it'll hiss a little while when you're building up to pressure and that's perfectly normal. Don't take the lid off and check what's going wrong because I did that and there was really no reason to. So, um, let's see. I think I can do this. There we go. Super professional. This is what the casserole or the, the uh, lentils and rice look like in the pot. And I'm gonna spoon some out into a bowl. <clears throat> when I 
eat it, I like to add some avocado and some sour cream because it's Tex-Mex after all. So it should have those flavors. And it looks like this, it's delicious. The best thing about things you make in the Instant Pot are that this lasts for days. So I have a glass lid that fits on top of this. I'll just wait for it to cool, stick the pot in my fridge and I will eat rice and lentils for the next three nights for dinner. Um, if I was going to work, I'd bring it for lunch because it reheats well in the microwave, but I'll be at home so I can reheat it on the stove. Um, I think that's about all of the major things I wanted to cover about this recipe. Again, Nisha Vora is on Instagram at Rainbow Plant Life, and you can follow her. Her book, Instant Pot Cookbook, we've got tons of at TVA. If you guys have any questions and you type them in the comments, I think that I can read them and address questions. So if you have any questions, type them now, and I'll just talk for a minute about the TVA. So our website is veg.ca. You can go to veg.ca slash join to become a member. It's a minimum $25 donation to become a member of TVA. And with that, you get discounts at Great Toronto restaurants, uh, restaurants in the whole GTA. Um, you get our quarterly newsletter lifelines. And most importantly, you support the TVA. In times like this, it's really important to help charities and small businesses. And we would really appreciate it. So veg.ca slash join. You could follow us on Instagram, Toronto Veg. I'm just going to look and see if there's any questions. Oh, people want to come over and eat. That's that's fine. Yeah. I'm not telling you where I live because it's delicious. Um, Vanessa says you can twist the valve so it's open and releases on its own right away. And yeah, I do that if it's a longer pressure release. A good thing to do is grab a tea towel and put it over top so the steam is going into the tea towel and not uh, into your face. <laughs> um, let's see. Any comments on using the Instant Pot as a slow cooker? I have not actually used it as a slow cooker yet. I've used it as a to saute things. I've used it as a slow, like as an Instant Pot, but I haven't actually used it as a slow cooker yet. Um, if anybody else has and they want to chime in in the comments, that would be cool. Actually, I have a slow cooker too, so I would probably just use that if I wanted to slow cook. Um, Steph says she doesn't have an Instant Pot cookbook. Um, she was bringing it for cooking time and everything was always mush. Do you always use recipes? I don't anymore, but when I was first starting cooking in the Instant Pot, because I didn't really understand how things worked, I would use a recipe so it's like anything right you have to you have to figure it out before you can start experimenting so I recommend um if you don't have an instant pot cookbook um Nisha Vora posts great instant pot vegan web um recipes on her site again rainbow plant life that's her that's her um website name as well there's also vegan Risha. she posts instant pot uh recipes that are good quite often um, and a lot, the Instant Pot has an app that has a lot of vegan options, um, and a lot of recipes can be modified, right? If it calls for beef broth, use veggie broth. If it calls for ground beef, use ground, like, beef stuff. Um, I made a cabbage roll dish a couple weeks ago that was not vegan, but it did, like, sort of change over quite easily, so that's a good idea. Um... Trying to go by the Instant Pot manual cooking times, yeah. And I mean, things are going to be not necessarily mush, but like this turned out really well. The lentils are still formed. The rice still has texture. It's just sort of, I think, getting the ratio of liquid to solid right. Because if you have too many liquid, too much liquid, it's going to make everything mushy. And if you don't have enough liquid, you're going to get a burn warning. So it's, you know, trying to balance the two. Um, so the plan is, I, yes, Barbie asks, uh, if you see a recipe that says to use the Instant Pot, you can modify cooking time to make it in a regular pot. And most of the recipes I've found online, um, they, they give you instructions for cooking it in a regular pot. And I think that they're pretty similar. It's just that they need to be watched more and that it'll take longer because you're not getting that high pressure situation that's making it cook really fast. Um, so things like 
lentils and brown rice, there's no way brown rice would cook in 12 minutes, right? Or even the, the 30 minutes with the, um, the building up to pressure. So it's just, it makes it faster and more convenient because you can set it and walk away and then your dinner's ready when you come back. So go do a yoga video or go check Facebook or, you know, watch an episode of The Office. That's what I did. And then it's ready. So... <clears throat> Uh, what are good dressings for this recipe? I I like avocado and sour cream. So I'll slice up some avocado. I will put it on this side. I'll put a dollop of the tofuti sour cream. That's my favorite. And um, maybe some extra cheese if I'm feeling really uh, special. And yeah, it's, it's good on its own though too. You don't need to put anything on it because it already has tomatoes and cheese in it. It's delicious. And yes, you can use it to steam vegetables. Um, so what I didn't mention was that it comes with like a bunch of different tools when you get the Instant Pot. So there is like a little um, metal grate you could put on the bottom of the pot, but you can also get, you can get other pieces for the Instant Pot. So you can get a steamer basket, you can get um, like a pot in a pot so that you can do double boiling and things like that. Um, I haven't really experimented with any of that yet, but I heard you can get an air fryer for it too, which sounds really cool. So there are lots of things that I would like to try with the Instant Pot, but right now I'm working on mastering some really good dinners and breakfasts. And uh, yeah, so I think I've answered most of the questions. The plan is to put this online once it's finished. So if you wanna rewatch it, um, you can do that. It'll be on IGTV as well. Again, the Instant Pot Cookbook from Nishavora is available at the TVA if we, um, you know, when we're open again, hopefully soon, fingers crossed. Um, you can follow her on Rainbow Plant Life. She has a recipe that's very similar, available for free, called Mexican Beans and Rice. Uh, Veg.ca slash join if you want to become a member, you want to donate. Or follow us on Toronto Veg on Instagram. And if you like this, let us know and we'll do more because we're all home anyways and I like to cook. So I might as well just invite you guys into my kitchen and do smart cooking. Uh, yeah, that's everything. Thanks guys. Bye.